Hello everybody, my name is Jennifer Maker. It is a beautiful day to talk all about sublimation and everything that I wish I knew before I started so I can tell you too. Because back when I started, I totally made a lot of mistakes, some of which I'm hoping to show you today, and I would wished I'd had someone to clue me in to all of the tips and the tricks and the hacks and just the things that would have reassured me that it's okay <laughs> to make mistakes and to build my confidence to create all the things. Instead, I learned by trial and error, like most of us do, but as I say, I make the mistakes so you don't have to. So please pull up a chair here in my studio and let's talk all about sublimation. Now, before I get started, I just want to welcome all of my Maker Academy weekend students. I see you here coming into the chat. I've got my little screen up here. Um, this is a special class I'm doing in preparation for Maker Academy weekend that starts in less than a week now. I'll be teaching you how to use sublimation for several of our awesome craft projects during the weekend. So I wanted to chat about it and make sure that we're all good to go. And everyone is invited to join us for free. You can get a free ticket at makeracademy.com slash weekend to learn over 20 amazing crafts and have a fun crafty weekend with me. And currently, I think we just passed over 80,000 other crafters who have signed up too. One more thing, this is a live class, so I will answer your questions at the end after I share my tips and tricks for sublimation. But I encourage you to help each other out in the chat as we go along because you are all so awesome at that. All right, now for anyone who's new to this technique, sublimation is a really fun and useful crafting method that creates vibrant full color objects such as shirts and mugs, tumblers, signs, and so much more. Sublimation refers to the process of transferring a special ink into another surface, embedding it right in there permanently. Sublimation ink can come from several different places. A sublimation printer that prints custom designs like my sawgrass here or my Epsons back here. A special pre-printed transfer sheet that you, you can cut like Cricut Infusible ink. And from sublimation ink pens or markers, like Cricut Infusible Ink Pens. So I have three of my favorite sublimation printers out today, the Sawgrass SG500, the Epson SureColor 170, and the Epson EcoTank, as well as infusible ink transfer sheets and infusible ink pens and markers. So whether you haven't even tried sublimation yet, or your sublimation printer is still in the box, or you've been sublimating for years, I hope I've got some tips and tricks for you today. If even just one of these tips helps you, then my mission is complete. <laughs> okay, so now the first thing that I'd wished I'd known before I got started with sublimation was that you do not have to have a sublimation printer to sublimate. That's right. So I'd been hearing all about sublimation for some time, as many of us have, but in my mind, it was always in tandem with a sublimation printer. And at the time, I didn't really want yet another printer sitting in my craft room for just this one craft. But I didn't realize that you could just use pre-printed sublimation transfer sheets and sublimation pens and markers, which are a lot less expensive and are easier to use when you are new and you just want to learn about it. Cricut sells both of these, both the infusible ink transfer sheets and the pens and the markers. Now, uh, Usable ink sheets and pens won't let me print and press a photo of my daughter on a mug the way a sublimation printer would. It's true, but they will do a lot of cool things with sublimation ink. It's still sublimation ink, it's just in a different form. And if you want to still try sublimating your kid's photo onto something, you can always have someone on Etsy do a sublimation print for you for a lot less than the cost of a printer and the ink in the paper. So if you're thinking about trying sublimation, just know that you can start simpler with a transfer sheet or a pen or have someone else give or sell you a sublimation print. Okay, so that's a really good way to get started. Now the next thing I wished I'd known when I first began sub sublimating, a little over three years ago now, I think it is, is that you can sublimate onto way more things than you might think. In the beginning, I thought I could just do white and polyester shirts and tote bags, maybe a few special things with sublimation blanks that I'd heard about. And that's because sublimation ink needs polyester to bind to. If we just uh, put uh, 
it onto, let's say, a cotton shirt, the ink will not transfer well and it will really just wash out. The general rule is that you can only sub sublimate onto an object that is 65% or more polyester. And the more polyester, the better the sublimation ink will look. But what I've discovered is that with a little creativity, you can sublimate a ton of stuff. We've got sublimation onto cotton shirts, wood signs, journal covers, vinyl, blankets, tumblers, canvases, so many things. Like, did you know that you can sublimate onto most heat transfer vinyls and microfiber? <laughs> Sometimes we have to get creative, yes, but where there's a will, there's a way. So I'd, I wish I'd known how much I could sublimate before because I would have just tried more things in the beginning. And I think it would have helped me get started earlier too, knowing that I had more options. All right, something else I didn't know before I got started in sublimation is that it is actually less money to get started than I thought. I thought I needed a big fancy $500 plus printer, a big clamshell press, and a bunch of expensive sublimation blanks. But actually you can do it for less. For example, your heat press does not have to cost hundreds of dollars. You can do it with a Cricut Easy Press, which is typically quite a bit less. You can get it for under 100 bucks these days. And you do not need a fancy printer. I converted a cheap Epson EcoTank to sublimation, or you can just use the transfer sheet to the pens. And when it comes to blanks, I have found things to use at the dollar store. I've got one right here. I gotta show you. Dollar store. So if you're smart, you can actually get started for under $200, especially if you already have a heat press. So don't be afraid to try it out. That said, you can totally spend more. <laughs> <laughs> so be aware, and a lot of the decision to spend more is related to what printer you choose. It turns out there is a wide variety of sublimation printers. You can get a sublimation, or, or sorry, a purpose-built sublimation printer that is made for sublimation ink, like the Sawgrass, which is uh, at least 500 bucks, or an Epson F170, which is about 400. Or you can get an Epson inkjet like the Epson Inkotank right here and put sublimation ink in it instead of inkjet ink and that starts around $200 for a basic model. But you can also even get larger format printers like a Sawgrass 1000 or the Ecotank 15,000, 15 whatever. And you can spend like a bunch of money on that. I actually ended up with a lot of different sublimation printers while I was deciding what I like best. And I know others have too. I actually have six sublimation printers right now, the Sawgrass 500 and 1000, the Epson Surecolor, uh, the Epson EcoTank, and two Epson Workforce printers. Uh, you do not need or want to have all these printers. You do not want to end up with so many like I did while I was figuring it out. So do your research and pick the best one for your needs from the start. I have a whole video on this on my channel if you need some guidance. By the way, I want to pause for a second and remind everybody who is uh, joining us for Maker Academy Weekend that we are actually giving away a Sawgrass 500 and we're giving away an Epson EcoTank. I just saw them like a few minutes ago over on the shelf. We have all of our prizes. There's like over $11,000 in prizes. So even if you don't care because you know everything about the workshop, it's a good idea to join um, Maker Academy Weekend in my opinion, because we have tons of awesome giveaways. I'm going to move these. I keep thinking I'm going to bump these things, so we're just going to move them over a little bit. Okay, more tips. All right, now, so because I have all of these sublimation printers, I've also learned that not all sublimation printers are the same. So first, Epson Workforce printers are really hard to convert to sublimation. Avoid them if you can, seriously. <laughs> Second, any converted inkjet printer, including the Epson EcoTank, needs to be turned on and printed regularly, at least once a week, if not every few days. This is because sublimation ink is more likely to dry out and clog your ink lines and nozzle. If they get clogged, you can do things to fix them. It's not the end of the world, but it takes a bunch of time and wastes a bunch of ink. So avoid that if you can. And third, the sawgrass sublimation printers, which are made for sublimation, have some auto check features which run to keep your printer in top condition so things don't dry out. But you have to have your printer plugged in and turned on for them to work. Of course, duh. <laughs> I knew none of this in the beginning and I want you all to know this too if you're shopping for a sublimation printer. I've also learned that sublimation ink has a shelf life. 
and expiration date. You can see it printed on the side of your cartridges or bottles. Let me show you. I've got, is it on, the, on these? I think it might be, I don't, it's on the box. Let's find one that's got it. Cause they might all be on the box now that I think about it. I think this has got it. This is, a, this, is the, this is the Epson um, ink that comes with um, the F170. When I'm gonna hold this up, it's actually pretty small, but it is, let me get this to the focus, it's actually right there. See, it says 2023, can I even read that? It's on there. <laughs> so everything, all of the inks have a, um, a shelf life, so you should know this. So you should expect it to last about a year or so. For example, my sawgrass cartridges were good for 15 months from the date that I installed them, while my hippo ink um, is good for like 18 months from the date that I added it. If you're using your sublimation printer regularly, this is not a big deal because you'll go through your ink and you'll need more ink before it expires probably anyways. But if you're just thinking about getting started now, um, or if you're about to go to Florida for the winter, lucky you, you need to know that there is a shelf life. So get your ink when you're ready to use it regularly. Don't just let it sit there forever before you use it, okay? Now something else I've learned the hard way is that sublimation ink is not only all different from each other, but it will come out looking different out of different printers. Uh, printers like the Sawgrass make it easy if you use their ink, but if you go with something like the Epson Eco Tank, Eco Tank, you need to use the third party ink, and they are all a little different. So I like Hippo ink, but it can look a little different when it's printed from different Epson Eco Tanks, seriously. So to get your ink to look the best from your particular printer, you can use something called an ICC profile or printer profile. Um, but not all inks have profiles for all printers. For example, Hippo Ink here has profiles that work for um, 11, I think, I just checked this morning, 11 different Epson Eco Tanks and, and counting, they're always adding them, but there's something like 20 or more different models. So it pays to research your ink and your printer profiles in advance too, if you wanna use one. If you already have a sublimation printer, definitely look into printer profiles as they can make your prints look better. And you don't even have to use an ICC printer profile that's intended for your printer. You can experiment with all of them until you find the one that you like best or none at all. Many people are just fine with the inks just as they come out of the printer. Let me actually show you, um, I want you to see the difference in inks. So um, I'm gonna show you, I, I did a test between four different printers and I have them, oh, they're all up here. This is my Subla flower. Some of you may have seen it before. This is a, um, a flower that I designed, a flower. It's, a, it's really a test print. I designed it to test a sublimation ink. That is its purpose. So you'll notice right away, these are all a little different from each other. These are all um, done on different printers and I've labeled them all. So this is the Epson Eco Tank right here. Lovely. By the way, this is MDF that I laminated. It's actually scrap MDF. <laughs> we were just playing around one day and this, so <laughs> it's, not, it's not pretty, but it worked great. Um, this one is the Sawgrass, also beautiful. This one is gonna have, this is gonna be the Epson Workforce. This is with Printer's Jack ink. And yes, I did convert a Workforce so I knew, and that's why I say with some experience that it's not fun to convert the Workforce. <laughs> and this is the Epson F170 before I remember to use the printer profile. So I want you to notice, um, I know there's some light reflecting on these, sorry, but I want you to see the difference in these colors. And this one is really darker and less vibrant, and I had forgotten to put the printer profile, like turn it on. So, but you can still see that there's really quite a bit of difference. Uh, by the way, I this, this flower here, uh, you can and should do test prints just like I am uh, to find the colors that you like best. This Subla flower is free for you to use. Um, I have it with and without the color codes on it. Um, it's got all the colors in it and it looks super cute to boot. So you'll do a test and it'll still look fun. And you can find it for free over at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation dash for dash beginners. Okay. All right. Speaking of what comes out of the printer, I did not realize in the beginning that sublimation prints would look dull when they were first printed. 
the colors are a little muted and they're faded on the paper. And this can be confusing and make you think that maybe you've messed up. But you haven't because you just can't see the true colors until you press your print onto a sublimation friendly surface like a simple piece of white polyester. So don't assume that what comes out of your printer is going to look the same as what the finished product is. I see a lot of this in my Facebook group. They print it and they're like, oh my gosh, something's wrong. They gotta press it first. Now something else that may be obvious in the beginning or not be obvious is that sublimation ink is transparent. Um, that's right, it's transparent. So if you put it onto a white shirt, it looks amazing because the white background under the transparent ink makes it really pop. It's super vibrant. But if you put a sublimation design onto a black shirt, you will not even see it. The black shirt showing through the sublimation ink completely hides the ink, completely. Now there are some fancy, expensive, and fussy sublimation printers out there that will print white ink, but I haven't personally tried them yet, so I can't really comment on them. Um, and there are some ways to put something white down first, like white glitter iron-on. I actually have that one right here. Um, and then you sublimate onto it. So this is just white glitter iron-on. It's not quite as cool as just putting sublimation ink alone into something, but just so you know, most of the things you sublimate should be white or light colored, and you'll wanna experiment with other methods, okay? Another thing that's really important to know is that your surface matters. The higher the polyester count, the better your transfer. If you can get 95 or 100% polyester, your color will be deeper and richer. The good news is that if you can't find things uh, with that much polyester, there are other things that you can do. Uh, they are an additional step like adding a special vinyl, like this glitter, or putting something called Easy Subly, or using a sublimation coating spray, or a laminate sheet, which is one of the projects we did here but it does allow you to get a polyester coating on nearly anything you have your heart set on sublimating. What you don't want to do, however, is just assume anything can be sublimated onto with good results. So that Dollar Tree mug, it's just not gonna work. <laughs> so always check the polyester count or if it has a sublimation coating, and if it's not good enough, add the coating yourself in some manner, okay? All right, so given the polyester count, that means there's an environmental impact here. A polyester shirt is just not going to biodegrade. So if this is a factor for you, choose biodegradable objects like cotton, ceramic, and wood, and then add a sublimating co sublimation coating of some sort. While the coating itself isn't biodegradable, it's really, really thin, and the environmental impact will be minimal. So that's something to keep in mind always, I think. Now, in addition to using a sublimation ink on a sublimation friendly surface, there's another important consideration, and that is heat. Sublimation requires temperatures of at least 350 degrees Fahrenheit, but it's best if you can go all the way up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, you can use a traditional heat press to do this. Uh, yes, even a Cricut Auto Press, which I love, but you can also just use a Cricut Easy Press, which is usually less expensive. You can even use the mini easy press. Can you see this back here? This is the mini. As it, it does get hot enough, I have tested it. What you can't use is a household iron. It just typically does not get hot enough. Other things you can use for special projects are special presses like tumbler, mug, and hat presses. I have a tumbler press right there, as well as unusual things like convection ovens, air fryers, and even sometimes a heat gun. <laughs> so certain heat presses will work best for certain projects. So it pays to think about what kind of projects you might wanna primarily do when you're first deciding what to get. And if you do decide that you mostly wanna sublimate flat things like shirts and signs, it then becomes important to get a heat press that's large enough to press most of your uh, projects in one go. Because if you press sublimation in sections, you can get weird lines where your pressings overlapped. And sometimes you can't avoid it on large projects, but if you know that you're going to wanna to press, let's say, a lot of extra large t-shirts, make sure that your heat plate is large enough for the majority of your designs, uh, whether they are sublimation prints or infusible ink. Um, you would not wanna use, like say, the mini easy press on a big design. Not only would it take forever, but you'd get inconsistent results in your colors. You want a nice big heat plate. 
unless you're just doing small stuff, right? Something else I'd wish I'd known in the beginning is that the heat and the pressure required for good sublimation is so strong that it can actually press the edge of a piece of sublimation paper or infusible ink liner right into the surface. So you'll end up with a faint line of a square or rectangle around your design and it is hard to get out. In fact, I have an example of this to show you because I have done this because like I say, I make the mistakes so you don't have to. So I dug out one where I'd messed it up. Got it down here. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about so you can see. So let's switch over here. This is a, a microfiber blanket. This is infusible ink. It is not like a sublimation print. So you can see how cool you can, uh, cool things that you can do with uh, sublimation, sorry, this is infusible ink transfer sheet, okay? Microfiber fleece blanket. So I hope that we can see this. Can You can see it. So there's like a line here. Can you see this, right? It's, let me see if we can kind of angle it. Yeah, there we go. See this line right here? See that? That's the, in fact, I actually still have the original. I dug it out so you could see it because I'm crazy and keep things like this. <laughs> so here it is. This is what it was shaped like when I, when I, there's actually two layers here, but so what it shaped up, you can see that the edge here uh, matches up, right? So we like, it, we heat it at such a temperature and so much pressure that it will indent there. But <laughs> you can avoid this, okay? So, so not to worry, now that you know what to do, you can totally avoid this. And I've done tutorials on this, so you might already know, but you might not either. Because let me show you a beautiful shirt that does not have any lines on it. It's got our fold lines on it, but you can see how lovely this is. You cannot see any weird edge here, right? So the secret is that you need to either cut or tear the edges of your paper so it's the edges are less noticeable or completely gone together, like in this case. It works really well, and I'm now in the habit of always cutting or tearing around the edges of my prints for beautiful transfers. So if you're going to do the infusible ink, you're not gonna tear that plastic, you would cut that. And if you're, but if you're doing a sublimation print on sublimation paper, you can just tear it, or you can cut it, it's your choice. I think it's a little faster to tear it, so I like to tear it. So yes, it's one of my favorite tips. All right, so speaking of lines and stuff, you also wanna be mindful of the edges and seams in your surfaces. When you press a sublimation project, whether that's a sublimation print or Cricut infusible ink or transfer, or, you know, the Cricut infusible ink transfer sheets or pens, it doesn't matter. You wanna be sure that the section that you're gonna transfer your design onto is flat and your heat press can make a nice tight press with it. You need to watch out for things like seams, zippers, like on my uh, makeup bag here, pockets, anything that will interfere with your press, getting a, getting a good contact with your surface. So sometimes you need to put a pressing pad inside your project to elevate it away from the seams, zippers, or projects. This is especially true of things like the zipper bag. Let's actually bring this over here so you can see. Oops, I knocked the thing over. So this is a zipper bag. And I've got something in here right now. I've got cotton balls in there. But when it's flat, like the zipper actually is thicker than the material. And it will like create, um, it'll raise it up enough so that you don't get that nice tight, uh, you know, seal basically between your material, your print and your press. So there is a solution. They're called pressing pads and they look like this. Um, and you can put them inside of things like zipper bags or baby bodysuits. So you can buy them. These are ones that I've bought or you can make them. I make, made this one. I have a tutorial on how I made them over at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut dash auto press if you'd like to learn how. No sewing is required. <laughs> you can also just use a Cricut Easy Press mat inside of a tote bag or a shirt too. Now, another thing that I learned the hard way is that pre-pressing really, really, really does matter. Always pre-press everything for at least 10 seconds before you press 
your sublimation print or infusible ink project onto it. Pre-pressing removes moisture because moisture is not our friend in sublimation. Moisture causes unevenness and blurriness and basically poor transfers. So don't forget to pre-press or think that you should just because, oh, well, it's fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> pre-press. Trust me on this one. Also, cleanliness matters when you're pressing. Always clean your surface to avoid transferring lint, pet hair, dirt, or grease, which will mess up your beautiful design. The best way to clean any surface for sublimation is with a lint roller. <laughs> it works on all surfaces and it does a great job. Everything. So I just, any lint roller will do. I just have a cute pink one. I also recommend you use a clean sheet of butcher paper on all of your sublimation and infusible ink presses, all of them. Not only does it protect you from anything that might be on your heat plate or platen from transferring to your project, but it also prevents anything from getting on it in the first place, right? From the blowout of your sublimation ink. You can get pre-cut sheets of white uncoated butcher paper, or you can just use like a big roll and tear off what you need. It really makes a difference. Now, another thing that I wished I'd known before I started doing sublimation is that taping really matters. Early on, I would try to skip over the taping aspect of things, um, and that was pretty much a disaster. A tape isn't just convenient, it is necessary. You need to tape things tightly to your surfaces because if there's any wiggle room, even if there's a chance for air, to, air bubbles to get in there, you can get blurriness or faint double images, which we call ghosting. So you want to tape, 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 tape it in, to within an inch of its life. On flat things like a shirt or a sign, you can usually get away with four pieces of tape, one on each side. But on a curved surface like a tumbler, you will want to tape your print and surface tightly and at every edge. I cannot stress this enough. If you're making mugs or tumblers and you're getting blurriness or ghosting at the top or bottom edges, it's because there's not enough tape. <laughs> also, you should know that uh, what kind of tape you use matters. You must use heat resistant tape. I think I've got my tape. Where's my tape? I don't know where my tape went. Uh, I wanna show you the tape. Maybe it's just hiding under, there it is. Tape. Tape. <laughs> All right. So um, you have to use heat resistant tape. Sometimes when you buy a heat press, it will come with tape. Don't assume that it's the right tape for sublimation. It could just be tape for, you know, vinyl heat pressing. Most of the yellow tapes that they sell are not sublimation friendly and it will transfer yellow lines to your surface. I prefer the blue sublimation tape. I always use the Cricut brand of sublimation tape because I've been using it. It's never left a mark on any of my projects, so I trust it. So basically, you use the blue tape or one that you know works and isn't gonna transfer anything. Also, don't forget to mirror all of your sublimation prints. Cricut infusible ink transfer cuts and infusible ink designs, all of it. Basically all sublimation is mirrored because you want the ink side to go against your surface. So this is the ink side. So it's always flipped over. So always remember to mirror your projects. You can mirror when you print or you can mirror when you cut on a Cricut. Okay, so it's just part of the process. And something else I recommend you do is to keep a notebook. Um, if you're a pen and paper sort of person, have a make yourself a notebook or just use digital notes. There are so many different combinations of pressing temperatures, times, materials, methods, and equipment out there that it is going to be impossible to remember everything. Don't even try. So when you find the winning combination for a project that you like, write it down. Then you can go back and check to see what worked for you the last time. In my sublimation startup mini course, that is our course project to make a sublimation journal which looks like this, <laughs> or whatever. You, you get to design it yourself. I don't care how you make it. Just make a notebook and record notes about what worked and what didn't work for you. And you can thank me later. <laughs> All right. Finally, the biggest thing that I wish I knew in the beginning about sublimation is that it is totally okay to make mistakes and mess up. We are not gonna make everything perfectly. Definitely not the first or second, maybe even third time. And making mistakes can really be the fastest way to learn to do it the right way. So let me give you an example. 
So I have a, another mistake. I actually have lots of mistakes. So let me switch my, here we go. <laughs> What's the mistake here? Tell me in the chat. <laughs> Can you see it? Let me hold it up a little bit more for you, right? That's one mistake for you. Let me go give you another mistake. It's inspiring to see mistakes. How about this one? Can you guess what the mistake here might be? So, like, as soon as I did this, it's it's not mirrored right, thank you, Kay and Linda and Lori. As soon as I did this, I'm like, okay, I don't really want to keep wasting my coasters. I learned super quick that I don't want to waste my blanks. And you can bet that I have been double checking that I have mirrored my projects every time since then. That said, honestly, we all still make mistakes. This is one of our projects for, is it this one? Nope. This is one of our projects for Maker Academy Weekend. Isn't it super cute? Sublimation ornaments. I want you to call your attention to this side. <laughs> We're still, you're always gonna make mistakes. It's gonna happen. It's part of the process. As you go along, you make fewer and fewer mistakes though. So. And by the way, um, double-sided, so still looks super awesome. This here, by the way, was me experimenting. I was like, I got this from the Dollar Tree, and I'm like, ooh, I wonder if I can sublimate on it. Um, this plastic is not, it just totally melted, right? <laughs> it did not work. And thankfully, because I had a piece of butcher paper protecting my platen, nothing was harmed, right? So um, you can experiment without, you know, maybe there were some toxic gases released, but I always have really good ventilation and I recommend that you do too. Whenever you're heat pressing anything, you wanna make sure you have good ventilation. So it's okay, right? I mean, learning sublimation takes time and practice. You are not likely to get it right on your first attempt. You shouldn't expect that. I know you'll see me get it all right and everything, um, but you know, of course I'm figuring it out as I go. Um, but if you expect that you're gonna get frustrated with yourself and with your projects, you might give up too early. I do not want that. Please be patient with the process. Have grace with yourself. Have fun with it. It is truly an amazing technique. It truly is. I love it. Um, something else I didn't know in the beginning is that there are people like myself who love to share what they know through tutorials and videos. Find someone you like. Follow them. Learn through them. I don't care who it is. Angie Holden. She's a friend of mine. She's awesome. <laughs> um, find someone that you like. Follow their tutorials. It's a great way to learn. For example, Maker Academy Weekend um, is coming up. This is an annual event I do every year. It is filled with tons of popular projects, and it's a great way to immerse yourself in crafting. Make some fun stuff. Hang out with other crafters who make cool things, too. You can learn so much by participating in just one workshop, but there are over 20 and they are free. We have specific sublimation projects this year. We are making ornaments, which I showed you. We're learning how to sublimate on cotton to make canvases. Plus we're playing with infusible ink pens, markers and transfer sheets to make shirts, tote bags and mugs. And I'd be happy to show you those things up close if you'd like to. This year's Maker Academy weekend is next weekend from November 3rd to the 6th. You can get a free ticket to view the workshops and supply lists and designs now over at makeracademy.com slash weekend. I am so looking forward to doing it. You get to just be at home. It's an online event. Get on your computer or your tablet. Hang out with 80,000 of us as we make stuff. It is a lot of fun. Do you guys all have your tickets? Let me know in the chat if you do while I pick up my my transfer sheet that I knocked over. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff here. I'm always amazed at how much stuff I can cram in here so that, and like still there are all sorts of things that I can't quite manage to get in here. When we do Maker Academy weekend next weekend, we get to focus on one project at a time. So it's a little, I get to like really deep dive into each thing. So it's sort of glossing over things. Yes, I see lots of people have their ticket. Excellent. I am so looking forward to this. If you haven't got your ticket, you can still get it for free. Um, just go to makeracademy.com. We'll do it. If you're watching this video in the future, after we've had our event, we'll do it again next year. And you can always get a VIP pass to watch it. Like we don't, that always stays in place. All right, I am really, I'm really excited. <laughs> awesome, okay. So if you have any questions, um, please, that I didn't answer, please let me know. And 
come on over to my sublimation group at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation group and post your question there or just leave it below this video. We answer our questions. It's really important for, to us. And that's it for today. This weekend, I'll be back to host Maker Academy Weekend for four days straight. I cannot wait. It's going to be so much fun. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love. And now I would love to answer some questions that you have. Okay, so my team has been collecting questions. You're welcome to shout them out right now. I will answer as many questions as I can. So uh, Michelle says, can you use sublimation on water slide paper? I don't know, but I don't think I would bother because sub water slide works just fine with inkjet with an inkjet printer. That's how I've used water slide. I don't know. It's possible. It might. I mean, after all, um, if it's made of a polymer, polymer, however we pronounce that, polyester, you could. Yes. So the only thing you have is a sublimation printer. You might be able to do it. It's certainly worth a try. I don't know though. I've never tried that one. Dinah says, do the sublimation markers have a shelf life also? Yes, they do. It is not, however, marked on them. I wish it were. I think <laughs> I'm going to go by memory. I think it's a year. Um, that said, I've had mine now for three years. I never kept track of which ones I got early on or more recent. And I've only, the only ones I've had that haven't worked, they were, they didn't work from the beginning. So, uh, maybe someone in the chat knows how long it technically is because, because I, I don't remember. Um, but yes, every, all sublimation ink has a shelf life. I would assume one year. One year seems like a nice, good thing for us all to remember. Susan says, so should you empty the tanks every year? Um, I, I really think that you should use your ink. That's really what the best thing is make stuff, make stuff. That's what you should do. And when it gets slow, you put in new ink. Um, I, I'm not going to empty my tanks. I haven't ever emptied my tanks. That's not what I'm going to do. I know that there's ways to do that. It sounds like way more work than I want to do. So my recommendation is use your printer. If you don't use it and you have a problem, sure, you can empty your tank and replace it. There's YouTube videos on how to do that. But that's not what I'm going to recommend you do because that sounds like a total drag. <laughs> uh, Jones Family says, what is the difference between sublimation ink and infusible ink from Cricut? Um, the, it's all sublimation ink. All of the, what comes out of the printer, you know, from the ink, um, the transfer sheets and the markers, it's all sublimation ink. The difference is the, the method in which it gets onto your project. So this goes onto a piece of sublimation paper, so it prints on there. That means you have complete control over what you do, right? To all the colors, the design, everything. This is the one with the most customization. Uh, and I would say the next one is probably the infusible ink markers and pens. You can draw anything you want, right? So this is you manually drawing it. And then a transfer sheet, let me show you what one looks like. So you can see here. So a transfer sheet, um, this is one that's been cut, right? So they are, they, you can get them in salads or patterns. So it's pre-printed for you. And then it's put onto this special sticky liner that you use your Cricut to cut. And so this is a way to do sublimation without ever having a sublimation printer. These come in really pretty patterns. Let me show you. This is the um, Distressed Cool Water set, right? So, you, so it's already printed for you and you cut it out and you put it onto your project. So that, that's the big difference between the three. Um, there's probably, no, in fact, I know for sure there is another way to do that. And that is to use um, paint. There might even be some stamps, which is basically like an ink. So there are there's a sublimation ink or uh, paint that you so you can like paint some things too. So there's a number of different ways that you can do it. But that the big thing is that these are pre-printed and they're stuck to a liner, so you can cut them out, weed them, and press them. Whereas these just print out onto paper and you press them. Christine says. When is the sublimation printer profitable? Print one project per week or more? I'm not sure what you mean. You mean, when is the sublimation printer profitable? Print one, okay, 
I'm not sure what you mean. Let me know, Christine, because I'm not sure if you're asking like how often you have to print for it to be profitable, because that would completely depend on how much you charge for your projects. I mean, you could do a special project that is just once and make a whole bunch of money, or you could work your butt off <laughs> and not make any money. So it's not about time or frequency. It is about like keeping your ink not getting, you know, you don't want it to dry up and get clogged and all that. All right, uh, Lynn says, can you add a different brand of sublimation ink to continue to print items? For example, use Hippo ink and then switch to Epson ink. Um, will they mix okay? Generally, the advice is not to do that. Once you pick a sublimation ink, you basically want to stick with it. Uh, the exception comes in when you, um, first of all, can't, don't hate the ink, can't get it anymore, you have no choice, you have to switch. Um, or if you get super low, it's generally okay then to switch. What you don't really want to do is, you know, like right now, can you see, um, let's see, my Epson is about, my Epson Eco Tank is about half full. My F-150 is full. Okay, so the both are a good example right now. Um, right now, the, the, the tanks are, are, are fine. Um, and they're half full on the eco tank. I wouldn't want to go in there and add more, I don't know, printer's jack to the Hippo ink that's in my eco tank right now. Different formulations of ink. All of my printer profiles will get messed up. They may not play nice with each other. I don't know. So if you really want to switch, you're going to want to wait till you run out, okay? Or be willing to do a flush and clean your tanks. Um, yeah. So MT says, when would I use a Teflon sheet instead of butcher paper? Teflon is not your friend when it comes to sublimation either. Teflon traps moisture. You just don't use Teflon. Use a butcher piece of butcher paper instead. Seriously, just avoid the Teflon. I know that we're used to using a Teflon sheet when we do heat pressing with vinyl, um, like iron-on HTV, but Teflon will hold in the moisture and that can create a blurry image. So just don't use Teflon sheets with sublimation. Uh, Lashonda says, for the tea towel, can you use a woven towel for the recipe? You can use anything that will accept the sublimation ink. So what I have here, can you see that? Yeah, this is a microfiber tea towel, but this this blanket here is all soft and plushy. It's all fluffy, right? So you can totally use a woven one so long as it's um, either made of polyester or microfiber or it has a coating on it that will accept the ink, okay? So it doesn't, I mean, and also, you know, like especially with that blanket, like because it's, it's plushy, you know, you, you, as you move the fibers, it won't, the image won't be quite as clear, right? So with a woven one, let's say a, um, those kind that have kind of the cross row, I can't remember the name of them right now, but they're, they have more of a texture. Like you, could, you can totally sublimate onto them. It just, your image might not be as sharp as it would with something else. Okay. Um, MT says, when would, oh, sorry, I got that question. Um, KB says, do you have a suggestion for someone who wants a larger than Cricut project, but they don't want a glitter background? Yes, I do. And I actually, can I give you a sneak peek at a project that's coming up? I got it out to show you. If I can get to it, it's bigger than, than usual. Okay, so what I think you're asking about is let's say you want to make a doormat, right? This is definitely bigger than what's going to fit on Cricut Print and Cut, which currently is six and three quarters by nine and a quarter, right? Um, it's also bigger than what's gonna um, print out of, let's say, you know, like most of, most, like my, I do have a large format. I have two large format printers, but not, I don't have them out right now, but it's bigger than what's gonna come out of these too, right? This is all eight and a half by 11. So the good news is that you totally can do it. This is a project that we're, we're coming out with in, December. So watch for this. Isn't it cute? Do you like it? We're going to teach you how to make this, how to customize them. We're going to share this design, all of it. So yes, you can do it. And we're going to teach you how in December. It'll be part of our Merry Maker Mingle December event. Also totally free. It's my gift to the craft community. And because I love Christmas and sharing it with other people. So I love the holidays in general, really. Thank you, Barbara. 
<laughs> I know, isn't it cute, Pat? Yes. So we're totally going to teach you how to do that. So that's not during Maker Academy weekend, uh, but it is coming up soon. So, okay. Uh, let's see here. Um, Lindsay says, what's the difference between a ticket and a VIP pass? Okay, great. So this is for Maker Academy weekend. So a, a free ticket is free. Um, basically, um, you just say, I would like one, and we email you. And it's not like an actual ticket that, you know, because it's a virtual event. You don't need an actual ticket. It is an email. And once you get onto our mailing list, we're able to send you the links to the events. So every morning, you will get an email that says, go here to watch this and all that good stuff, right? That's your ticket. It's just basically saying, I'm here. I want you to tell me where to go to watch the workshops. The VIP pass is not free, but it's not expensive. And the VIP pass is a way to get early access right now. So you can get access to all the designs, all the assembly videos that are already done because we like to make them super clear. We edit them. Doesn't have my mistakes in it. Nothing's falling over. <laughs> um, so we make them in advance so you can get access to all the assembly videos. There's workbooks that go along with it written transcripts, all that good stuff, all the designs. So you get early access to it and you get to keep access to it after the event is over. Whereas those who have a free ticket get 24 hour replay access. So that's the big difference. So it doesn't cost very much money. The price is going up though. If you want to get it, this is a good time to do it. Um, and the, the link to get that, you'll get like a page to get it when you get your free ticket. It'll like show, it'll ask you if you want it. But you can also go to makeracademy.com slash VIP. All right. Um, Ellie says, do you have a tutorial on how to set up ICC profiles, please? We need to know how to do that. I totally do. I actually have specific printer setup videos. Um, I have a setup video for the Sawgrass and the Epson EcoTank and the Epson F170. So they're either on YouTube or on my blog over at jennifermaker.com. And in them, I show you exactly how to get the ICC profiles. Well, the Sawgrass is built in, so you don't need it for that. But for the others, I show you exactly how to get it for those printers, right? And how to use them on Mac and Windows. So watch those to see how to do it. Brandy says, can you use parchment paper instead of butcher paper? I will admit that I have totally used copy paper and parchment paper in a pinch um, instead of butcher paper when I needed to. Um, I've also used cardstock. <laughs> what you want to avoid, like, you know, if you had to in a pinch, I would just get the, the stuff that you need, though. A big roll of that butcher paper will last you a really long time. What you don't want to use ever is something like freezer paper or wax paper because they're both coated. So you just want to use a plain paper that's not coated. The reason why uh, butcher paper is the best is because it has the, the best ability to, for it to pass the moisture through it. There's something about the way it's made. I looked it up. I don't quite remember anymore what it is, but I know that it's, um, it's, it's, the moisture can pass through it more easily than, let's say, a piece of copy paper can, which might trap the moisture instead. We've all seen felt a piece of humid paper, but, or like damp paper before from humidity, right? Yeah. Uh, Kathy says, my PTO request for Friday was denied. Oh, I was so sad. <laughs> you tried to get time off for Friday. That's, I am so honored, Kathy. Thank you. Um, so I can't attend any workshops until after work. Do we need to be present to win any of the giveaways? First of all, I'm sorry that you couldn't take Friday off, but yes, you can totally watch the replays when you get home. Yes, you have 24 hours to watch, so you can just watch whatever you want when you get home. No big deal. Um, you do not need to be present to win the giveaways. You just need to have entered, right? So no, we're not going to make you be there and then raise your hand because the thing is, is that we know there's technical issues, right? So you could have a problem at that point and that would be no fun. Plus, there's a lot of people and it, and it can be really hard to see names if they're scrolling by. So we don't require that. Just make sure that you've got it. You need to have a ticket, a free ticket. Okay, just got to make sure that you've got that free ticket. We'll check and then you need to have entered the giveaway and you get the... Um, page to enter the giveaway after you get your free ticket. Okay, you get an email. Make sure you're getting that email. When you get that email, drag that email into your inbox. If you've got Gmail, add my email address to your address book. 
You don't want my emails going to junk or spam or promotions or wherever they might want to go. So that's like your biggest task is to make sure you get your email from me when you get your ticket and then make sure you're continuing to get my emails, right? That's the best thing that you can do. Um, because then if you are a winner, you're going to get an email and you don't want that go ending up in your junk mail and you don't see it. You just need to respond within 48 hours. <laughs> uh, okay. Pam says, how do you know which temperatures to use and how long on different items? Well, so at this point, I generally have a place where I start, right? 385 degrees Fahrenheit is a nice, good middle ground. And I tend to start, like when I don't have any idea, I tend to start there. And I tend to start at like 30 seconds and see what happens. Um, but another way, another thing that you can do is Google it. <laughs> like a lot of times when I want to like kind of just get to like, oh, I just want to figure it out quicker, right? I just go and I look at what other people have done. There are so many amazing YouTube videos and blog posts and Facebook posts and message board posts of people who have used that same blank and that, you know, that material and that press that you have a good starting point. Um, I know that, for example, when I was making my laminates my this is mdf that i painted white well actually greg did this for me at my request um he cut it on the glow forge it's mdf so it's like wood um and he spray painted it white and then um because it's just paint you can't just sublimate onto paint or wood for that matter we got a piece of laminate and we put it on onto it right I had no idea it was my first time doing that. So I'm like, well, I'm not going to just guess in this case because what if it's like weird or something? It's like it's a weird material, right? So I got onto YouTube and I found an awesome video of someone that was doing the exact same thing. She was putting uh, laminate onto MDF. She had painted it. And I'm like, and so I followed what she was using and I tried it out that way first. And as I recall, it's just like 10 seconds. She kind of just tacked down the laminate. And then, you know, just to get it into the, you know, to stay. And then you put your print on it and then you press it. So, so yeah, um, I just look online is usually what I do if I don't want an experiment. And then don't forget to put it into your notebook, right? Have a notebook or open up notepad on your computer, whatever, however you want to do it. And then actually keep a note of what works so that when you come back to it in a year or whatever, you don't have to guess at it. You know what worked. Debbie says, when using the sublimation markers, do you always draw on paper, then transfer with heat to your blank? Yes. Uh, you might be tempted to like draw right onto your blank and press it, but you won't get good results. Um, it'll not be sharp. It'll be a blurry and weird and stuff. You're welcome to try it if you don't care about that, but you'll get the best results by drawing onto a piece of laser copy paper um, and then flipping it over onto your surface and pressing it just like you would a transfer sheet or a sublimation print. All right, uh, Barbara says, which model of sawgrass printer do you use? I have both the SG500, which is right here, and the SG1000, which is over there. So I have both. I tend to use this one the most, smaller footprint. <laughs> You know, like big things are a little bit more cumbersome. That's just the honest truth. Maybe, you know, if I was doing it all the time and I had a big sublimation shop, you know, I wouldn't care about that. Um, it is nice to have that bigger format. The, for those who don't know, the Sawgrass 500 is basically 8.5 by 11. The Sawgrass SG 500, I think it's 13 by 19, 11 by 17, bigger, but a larger format printer. I don't remember right now what its max size is. So I think 13 by 19. So... You can do bigger stuff with it. I actually find that I'm just fine with the smaller size because if I need it to be bigger, I just print out multiple sheets and I put them together like I showed you with this project right here, right? So this was made, this was not made on a large format printer. This was made on the Epson EcoTank with eight and a half by 11 sublimation paper, okay? So I, I just, I don't know, it's just, I think it's actually a little easier, but not everybody feels that way. Some people want to start with a large format printer because they know they're going to do a bunch of big stuff. It's everyone gets to choose for themselves. Um, okay. Another question is, is this the same Maker Academy weekend as last year? No, it's totally different. Oh my gosh. That would have been so easy. 
<laughs> no, it is completely brand new. So all new projects, everything is new. Um, so here, in fact, this is a great chance for me to show you some of our sublimation and infusible ink projects. So we're going to teach you, oops, this fell over. Everything's falling over. We're going to teach you how to do canvases. So, um, and they're also called gallery wraps, right? Let me show you a close up. Let me, let me clear a little space here so I can show you these things close up without so much clutter. Oh, these, this is a project too here. These are not projects. This is not a project. Okay. So switch over to here. So this is, oh, we don't need all this messy stuff. Okay. This is a canvas and we're going to show you different ways to get sublimation ink onto canvas because normally this is like made out of cotton, right? So um, there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. I've actually got everything labeled here. This one was done with sublimation spray right? Sublimation spray, for those of you not familiar with it, is a spray that you can put onto whatever material you're using. Usually we put it onto cotton and then you can sublimate onto it, okay? So this is the sublimation spray. We're also going to show you how to do it with laminate. So this is a canvas that we've laminated and then put this, in, look, look at how vibrant this is. And we're also going to show you how to do it with polyester. So here is polyester. Isn't this beautiful? When these make amazing holiday gifts, think about it and you can get, you can make them as big as you want. We're going to show you how to do the wrap and everything. Aren't these cool? This is me and this is Craig. So we're going to show you how to do this. This is, this is one of our projects. In fact, I even like I had put my camera up so you could see them and that would be a good thing for me to do, huh? So give me a second and I will switch my camera so you can see the projects here. See, I, I, I just totally forgot that I had this camera angle. All right, and then we're gonna show you how to make ornaments. So this is, uh, these are MDF ornaments. They come ready to go. And so we've made a lot, bunch of really cute designs. And you can do this with this, with this project. So this first project here is using, well, you could use anything. You could use sublimation print or transfer sheets or the pens for this. But in our workshop, we're showing you how to use the printer. And this one is obviously the printer too because it's customized, but we also are showing you how to use it with infusible ink transfer sheets. So either way, whether you have a printer or not, you can make some really cute ornaments. Aren't they cute? Um, there's a picture of Alexa when she was a baby. And then we're showing you how a whole bunch of fun things you can do with the infusible ink pens, right? And markers, these, right? Let me see, there we go. So a whole bunch of different things you can do with these. So here's some mugs, aren't they cute? So you can draw right on, not onto them. Again, we're drawing onto a piece of paper and putting them on, So, but you can make really cool, unique mugs. Here's another one that's drawn. And here is a makeup bag that's made using the them. Isn't that cute? Cool. So again, whatever you want. And let me show you this super cute tote bag. All these designs are included in, and they're free. All the designs are free. And this one here is a tote bag also made with the infusible ink pens um, and markers. So in this case, this is like a coloring project. Uh, your Cricut, this, is, this one's made in the Cricut, so it's not even made by hand, because of course you can put infusible ink pens right into your Cricut. These go right into the, a Cricut, so if you have a Cricut, you can do that. So, um, uh, so the Cricut draws the black, and then you color it in whatever colors you want, right? Isn't that fun? <laughs> and I think, oh yes, there's one more thing. I'll have to show you the big shot. There is a shirt. Can you see this shirt? It says craft a life you love. So also t-shirts and that's made with the pens. So lots of cool, th lots of ideas because you, what I do is I actually ask everybody what they want to learn. I do this several times during the year. You might've seen some of my posts. I ask in our Facebook groups. One of the things I heard was, what do we do with infusible ink pens and markers? So we came up with a whole bunch of ways to inspire you on what you can use them for. And then, our recipe tea towel. Let me show you that. Well, I can give you the nice, the nice pretty shot. That's not the pretty shot. 
that's a pretty shot so there right here this is a recipe this is my recipe but I'm presuming you're probably going to want to use your own recipe so we're teaching you how to bring in a recipe clean it up and this is infusible ink so but of course you could print it out and make it and this is a microfiber tea towel so um, super fun awesome gifts again so many options and possibilities really um, all right so uh, I see some more questions here Angela says how do you choose fonts that are good for infusible ink pen yeah great question um, so we are going to cover that in the workshop so that we in fact, in fact we even have made a new font. That new font isn't going to be during Maker Academy weekend, but it's coming up really soon. It's coming up, I think, the week after. So we've, I've already got one font and made a new font just for pens on the Cricut. Anyways, I, dig I digress. But we're going to teach you how to come up with good, with good um, font ideas for using pens in general, in fact. Um, because what you're generally looking for, um, well, it kind of depends. Sometimes you want a, a pen that... It will make the bubble letters that you fill in by hand, and sometimes you want a font that looks just like a single line. So that's a writing font in Cricut Design Space. Um, Alice says, do you have to have a mug press to sublimate on mugs or tumblers? No, you don't. Um, I have the Cricut mug presses back here. I have a tumbler press right here. They are the best options. I will tell you that because I have tested um, with all sorts of options, but with the tumbler, you can also use, I've got lots of things back here. Let's see if I can find, find it. I have so many things. This is my box of, um, I'm not finding it, but you can use these silicone um, bands and you can wrap them, you can put the bands on to keep your, your design tight on your tumbler and you can put it into a convection oven, taped really well, of course. You can use a heat gun, it won't be quite as good. So, um, and you can use an air fryer. So mugs and tumblers, you have a couple other unique options besides a specific and dedicated mug or tumbler press. And that usually involves something like a convection oven, a heat gun, or the air fryer, believe it or not. I have not tried the air fryer, but I know lots of people who use it successfully. Uh, Norma says, can you sublimate in layers with paper? I'm not, I'm not sure what you mean. Can you sublimate in layers? Oh, I think I know what you mean. You mean like, can you make a, um, a sub, can you do like a black layer on paper and then take another color and put that on top of it? Is that what you mean? So like maybe you have a black layer that you put it on your paper um, and then a piece, then a yellow, a red layer, let's say. So you wouldn't want to do that. You'd want to do your, all of your colors at once and sublimate it. And then the reason is, is because each time you press a sublimation print or project again, you will lose some of that ink. So if you press it multiple times, you'll, it'll just like start to like not look so good because it resublimates it. And then the ink changes once again from a solid to a gas and some of it will escape or or get weird on you. So it basically it kind of fades a little bit. So you don't want to do it in layers. The, um, if you need to use uh, layers of fusible ink, you actually put them all together at once too. I have some tutorials on that. Look for my video on the flip-flop t-shirt and that shows you how you can use layers of infusible ink um, in one pass, just one pass, so that you don't have to use multiple layers on top of each other. All right, and Donna says, what's the best paper to use with infusible uh, ink markers and pens? You wanna use a laser copy paper or one that says it's for both laser and um, inkjet. And the reason why is that a paper that's rated for a laser printer means it can withstand the heat better of our presses um, because a laser printer uses heat when it puts the toner onto the paper. So it's it's more heat resistant basically than like something that's made for an inkjet printer. But just regular inkjet, or sorry, regular laser copy paper is all you need for that. It is. All right. Um, all right, does anybody have any more questions? Should we wrap up? I have another video coming up in less than an hour. And what we're going to do is actually talk about all 
of the supplies that we need. So I'm gonna go over to Amazon Live because on Amazon Live I can actually link to each thing as I talk about it and then you can just click on it and go right to see all the specs, how much it costs, how long it's gonna to take to get to, all those, all those important things. And so it's useful to do it over there. Um, because then we can get really into the nitty gritty of, okay, so Jennifer, this is a super cute ornament, but where the heck do you get that super cute ornament Blake? So I will actually show you where to find that. Same for all of the other things that you see here. And I'll also um, show you the equipment, right? So if you need something and you are curious about exactly what I'm using. So you, I sent everyone an email. Well, everyone who has a ticket for Maker Academy Weekend got an email about, um, this video and the one I'm doing it at six o'clock Eastern time. Um, so if you are just getting your ticket now, you won't know where to find me, but my, my suggestion then is, what's the best way? You actually, can someone here set, give the link? Can you get the link from your email and put it in chat right now? Thank you, Jen, I appreciate that. So that link that Jen, Jennifer Marie, she's on my team, she's awesome. That link that she just shared is how you'll find me at six o'clock to talk about the specific supplies that you're gonna need for our, our Maker Academy weekend projects. That's gonna be our goal at six o'clock. Um, and yes, Pam, you can rewatch Amazon Live. Yep, they, they record it. So if you can't make it then, you can just still go to that same link, the link doesn't change, and you can just watch the replay. Totally. All right. Awesome. I'm so happy. Thank you all so much for joining me. Did I, did someone learn something? This is what I'm hoping for. Let me know in the chat if I taught you something new uh, that, that you hadn't learned. Something new. Yes, Jerry. 6 p.m. Eastern time. Totally. Um, thank you. Thank you, Meg. Thank you, Karen. Did anyone learn? I want to know what you learned because I'm, it matters so much to me that I'm actually useful and helpful. <laughs> so if I gave you a tip, let me know in the, in the chat because I'm watching it. I learned a couple things. I always learn something new. Karen says I learned a lot. Awesome. Yes, cool. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I truly do. I truly do. So I hope that you'll be here with me for Maker Academy weekend. No tough line. That's right. No tough line. <laughs> <laughs> I can sublimate on cotton. Yes, you can. If you've got a coating for it, you totally can do cotton. All right, cool. Thank you all for joining me. I will hopefully I'll see you around six o'clock. And if not, I hope I see you during Maker Academy weekend. And if you can't make it to that, I am on YouTube doing videos all the time. And don't forget, I have that super, super cool Facebook group, Sublimation Made Easy. That is one of the, my most favorite groups. I can't believe how fast it's grown and how helpful people are. It is a special place. I love that group. I have learned so many things in that group. It is at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation group. So come join us, okay? All right, thank you all so much. Have a great evening and hopefully I'll see you in a little bit. Bye.